Parvovirus B19 is a single-stranded DNA virus of the family Parvoviridae in genus Erythrovirus. It is a non-enveloped icosahedral virus that contains a single-stranded linear DNA genome. It is classified as erythrovirus because of its capability to invade red blood cell precursors in the bone marrow. B19 parvovirus enters the RBC via the P antigen and replicates in the erythroid progenitor cells. These are giant proerythroblasts with basophilic cytoplasm containing vacuoles in bone marrow. These are characteristic of parvovirus B19. Note large nuclear inclusions that are viral. In London in 1975, Yvonne Cassart and her colleagues discovered the first parvovirus pathogenic to humans, parvovirus B19. It was discovered while screening normal blood bank donor sera for the hepatitis antigen. B19 came from the patient code of one of the remic blood bank donors. The sample was in well B19 of a microtiter plate. Parvovirus forms that are pathogenic to animals were previously discovered. Parvovirus B19 cannot be contracted by or transmitted to animals. Parvovirus is also known as fifth disease because it was fifth among the common childhood diseases characterized by rash. Parvovirus B19 is primarily spread through respiratory secretions such as saliva, sputum, and nasal mucus. It can also be spread transplacentally with an estimated risk of 30% among non-immune women infected with parvovirus B19. It is also spread by blood and blood products and nosocomial infections. Parvovirus B19 is common worldwide with outbreaks in late winter or early spring. There is no difference between females and males with the rate of infections, but females are more likely to develop post-infectious arthritis. Parvovirus B19 infection is common in school-aged and younger children who attend daycare facilities. In general, children transmit the virus to parents and siblings. Chew. No. About 50% of adults are exposed as children or adolescents and have protective antibodies. Because primary infection may be asymptomatic for adults, they may have been exposed without being aware. A significant increase in the number of cases is seen every three to four years. The last epidemic year was 1998. Parvovirus B19 has a low mortality rate for most adults and children, but there are greater risks for fetuses and immunocompromised persons. The incubation period is typically 4 to 14 days. The first symptoms are fever, runny nose, and headache. This most contagious time is when it feels like just a flu. After several days, you may get a slapped cheek rash on your face. This is more common in children. This is considered a hallmark indicator for the disease. Once this rash appears, you are considered no longer contagious. Some people may get a second rash later on their chest, back, buttocks, arms, or legs. It may be itchy, especially on the soles of your feet or your palms. This rash usually disappears after seven to 10 days and may have a lacy appearance. Sometimes it can come and go for weeks. Some adults, especially women, may develop polyarthropathy syndrome, which is pain and swelling in their joints. This occurs most commonly in the hands, feet, or knees. Other adults will only experience painful joints with fifth disease and none of the other symptoms. This usually lasts one to three weeks, but occasionally can last for months or longer. When it does go away, there are no lasting repercussions. 
Complications with pregnant women and their fetuses can occur with the highest risk being during epidemics and following exposure to infected children. Infection is estimated at one in every 400 pregnancies. An estimated 50% of pregnant women are immune to parvovirus B19. Anemia is an underlying factor in the development of hydrops and ascites and can lead to fetal loss. Non-immune hydrops fetalis is the most common form of hydrops. It is caused by severe anemia. It occurs two to four weeks after maternal infection. It has a risk of 10% following infection. 10% of parvovirus B19 infections during pregnancy are associated with fetal loss. This usually occurs during the second trimester. The death of the fetus is usually four to six weeks after the infection, but can be as far as 12 weeks after infection. Most pregnant women are asymptomatic with possible exanthem and arthralgia. Mothers who are immune to fifth disease do not have to worry. Persons with severe combined immunodeficiency syndrome, acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, and patients receiving immunosuppressive therapy, i.e. post-organ transplant, can develop chronic anemia. The identification of parvovirus inclusions in marrow biopsies and the confirmation of infection by in situ hybridization is important in assessing anemia in immunodeficient patients. Screening patients for their B19 antibody status will identify a patient at risk of infection. If IgM is detected, the test result shows that you have had or currently have a recent infection. If IgG is present, immunity is indicated. If both IgG and IgM antibodies are absent, you are at risk of becoming infected. There are a variety of diagnostic assays available to detect IgM and IgG in serum. Testing is available for women of childbearing age that may have been exposed. IgM is shown in 90% of patients two weeks after infection. IgM peaks at 30 days after infection and may last up to four months. IgG antibodies start to appear after three to four weeks and usually persist for life. When doing a fetal blood sampling from a positive patient, a reticulocyte count that is high means meroplasia is resolving and hydrops should resolve on its own. If hydrops develops, intrauterine blood transfusion using cordocentesis may be used. A low reticulocyte count with severely anemic fetus may need an immediate transfusion. High titer intravenous immunoglobulin has been a reported effective treatment. Ultrasounds should be performed every two weeks with patient monitoring. Most of the time, the disease is mild and will go away on its own. Treatments usually involve treating the symptoms, such as the itching, joint pain, fever, and swelling. People with severe anemia may need to be hospitalized and receive blood transfusions. Those with weakened immune systems may receive antibodies via immune globulin injections to treat the infection. They are currently working on a vaccine for parvovirus B19, but as of now there are no drugs or vaccinations that will prevent the disease. If you do acquire the disease, you will have lifelong immunity. CDC recommends the following steps to avoid the spread of parvovirus B19. Wash your hands often with soap and water. Cover your mouth and nose when you cough or sneeze. Do not touch your eyes, nose, or mouth. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Stay home when you are sick.